Let's do a second example. This one will be a little more typical in that if you remember this list I showed you, and then we did an example where we didn't do two of those steps, here we will. And I'm going to mostly work this example, pen and paper, but just for time, let's uh, not write it all down. Let's just read it. We are creating a box by taking a square sheet of tin, cutting the corners off, and bending the sides up. And we want the box to hold as much as possible. In other words, we are trying to maximize the volume. So here, I think a picture is going to be useful. It will help clarify what's going on. We have this. 12 by 12 inch square. And we are cutting the corners out. And we're doing that so that we can fold these flaps up and create a box. And the volume of the box is going to be this times this times the height of one of these flaps. So let's label some stuff. What can we control here? We can control the size of these squares that we cut out. And this is going to appear in the formula for the volume. The volume is going to be this times this times this. And this is a square. So we only need to figure out one of these sides. Well, x plus this side plus x is 12. So this side is 12 minus 2x. And what do we know about x? x is between 0 and 6. Why 6? Well, because 6 would make this x together with this x be a 12. So, Really, these are not strict equalities. X, I mean, these are strict equalities. Sorry, it's late. X is strictly greater than zero, and X is strictly less than six. And the volume is 12 minus 2X times 12 minus 2x times x. I went ahead and foiled this off camera, and we got this. Now, good news, bad news. The good news is this is just a polynomial. It's derivative 
should be easy to take. Just watch me make some elementary error after saying that. But no, this is all correct. The good news is that once again, we're not really in any of the situations we've learned how to deal with. I mean, this is not a closed interval. X can't be zero. If X were zero, we wouldn't have any flaps. There wouldn't be a box. X can't be six. If x were six, there would only be flaps. The box wouldn't have a bottom. So we're not on a closed interval, but we're looking for an absolute maximum. We don't even know that an absolute maximum exists if we're not on a closed interval. So again, I'm going to retreat to uh, retreat to technology, or maybe retreat's the wrong word. That makes it sound like I'm ashamed. I love technology. Um, once we look at the volume graph, we clearly see that there is a map. Maximum, and that maximum is a local maximum. It's a critical value. So if we find a local maximum, that will be what we're looking for. We set this equal to zero, we can divide through by 12. We get x minus six times x minus two. So we have two critical values, but we're looking for one between zero and six. And we, if we go back to the go back to the graph, six is clearly a volume of zero. That's not what we're looking for. So the critical value at two, it is. And you can verify using the first derivative test or even the second derivative test, if you wanted to, that two really is a, um, a local maximum. We go from positive to negative there. So the dimensions we are looking for to, um, to maximize the volume if x is 2, this is 12 minus 4. We're looking for an 8 by 8 by 2 box.